Saudi Arabia at magandang tanghali po sa ating mga kapatiran sa Pilipinas. At pasensya na po kami ay na late because of technical difficulties at uh, hindi po talaga namin mapagana yung live sa Facebook neither sa uh, YouTube. So we'll have to bear uh, in Zoom and maganda yan kasi nakikita-kita tayo. All right, <laughs> nakikita-kita tayo and uh, hopefully may upload po namin mamaya yung ating scripture study, yung ating Sabbath service. All right, we've got Sabbath service, beautiful Sabbath morning. We're within the Feast of Sukkot and I hope we're all ready once again to listen and uh, study Yahuwah's word. And we'll just continue on studying about the tabernacle. I've got just a few details. I believe Brother Gary has uh, uh, some more to add sa ating pag-aaral about the tabernacle. And tingnan natin closely yung mga details na yun so that uh, we understand. Kasi pag mas maintindihan po natin yung, yung tabernacle na yan and all the <laughs> other instructions in Exodus, then we understand where Yahushua HaMashiach falls in there and hindi po natin i-mimit sa uh, we misinterpret uh, ang New Testament, but rather we will understand how holy Yahweh is, how uh, how detailed He can give His instructions. All right. So, bago po yan, may I request Brother Ivan to read Psalm ninety-two? Good morning, po. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Psalms chapter ninety-two, verse one. It is a good thing to give thanks unto Yahuwah and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and to faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Yahuwah, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Yahuwah, how great how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth it not, neither that a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Yahuwah, are most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Yahuwah, for lo, thine enemies shall perish, all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eyes shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow, grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of Yahuwah shall flourish in the court of our Elohim. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Verse 15, to show that Yahuwah is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Praise Yahuwah and the reading of his word. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Ivan. Just wanted to repeat verse 6. Abijan, a brutish man or a stupid man or a foolish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this, that Yahuwah's, Yahuwah is great, his works are great, and his thoughts are very deep. And kung talaga nating hahalukayin ang kanyang thoughts, we will find out the truth of his word, in his word. All right, so... We will sing Psalm 119. So open your scriptures in Psalm 119. And uh will give special uh, rendition ng ating mga kapatid po dito sa campsite. Amen. All right. Campsite. Dito. Ipofocus ko lang kayo, Rose. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we will sing Psalm 119. We'll sing two octaves, which is Nun and the ladies' favorite, uh, Samek. All right. All right, ready? Nun octave, thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. I 
his judgment. sing one more song. Let's sing the Shin Octave. This is a new one. So, itututo ko muna po sa akin. Very new one. This is the second to the last octave. And if you've seen the ladies sing this one, na napakadaming likes, na napakadaming views, pag ako kumakanta, <laughs> pwede ako lang po. <laughs> Alright. So, let's sing the Shin Octave verse 161 to 168. And then tonight, uh, when we get home, I'll be posting the Tao Octave para matapos na po natin just be, before the Sukkot ends ay nakuha na natin lahat na ito. No? So it's our responsibility to memorize it. All right? So, Shin Octave. Princess have persecuted me without a but my heart standeth in all thy words. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great 
fun. I hate and abhor lying, but I told on to I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee, because of thy righteousness Great peace have they which love thy Torah, and nothing shall offend them. Yahuwah, I have known thy Yeshua, and on thy commandments, my soul hath kept and I love them, felt them exceedingly. Sorry. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies. For all my ways are before thee. Great peace have they which love thy Torah, and nothing shall offend them. One more. Princess have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in all thy words. I rejoice that thy word as one that finds and breaks forth. I hate and abhor lying, but I tore unto my love. Seven times a day do I praise thee, because of thy righteousness now. Great peace have made which love thy Torah, and nothing shall offend them. Yahuwah, I have known for thy Yeshua, and on thy commandments, my soul has I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Great peace have they which love thy Torah, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they which love thy Torah, and nothing shall offend them. And nothing shall offend them. And nothing shall them. Amen, amen. Beautiful verse there. One of my favorite verses. And if you notice, kung kayo po ay nakarating sa aming Bethel, that's one of the verses posted just before you go home, dun galing sa Bethel. Yun yung haharapin mong verse which says, Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. And it's just amazing that Yahuwah just opened his word, his Torah to us. Alright, so brother Danny, can you please open us in a word of prayer? Amen, amen. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. At sa lahat po naman nasa wilderness. <laughs> Well, let's pray. Abba Yahuwah, Elohim, our Elohim, blessed are you, Adonai, and Elohim, King of all times, for giving us the path of restoration. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Marami pong salamat 
Abba. Maraming salamat sa kaligtasan at sa kalakasan sa araw na to na ginising mo kami at sa privilege na ma-observe namin, ma-celebrate namin at ma-guard namin ang feast na ito at maunawaan namin ito kung bakit namin ito ginagawa. Aba, bigyan mo kami ng pagkain physical at lalong-lalo na ang pang-spiritual, ang yung banal na salita na pumasok at may pamuhay namin ito at gabayan mo po kami at gumalaw at pumukaw ang banal na spirito sa aming mong buhay. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkakasala, sa mga pagkukulang, gawin na ganun na rin po aba, sa mga nagkakasala sa amin at magbigyan mo kami, magkaroon kami ng magpakumabang puso. At sa lahat ng ito, Aba, madakila at mataas lamang ay yung pangalan. Lahat ng mga biyaya at pagpapala ay tinataas namin at binabalik namin sa iyo. At pagpapuri lamang sa iyong pangalan, Most High Holy One, Our Creator, and Your Son's Name, Yahusha's Name, Hamashiach, I pray. Amen. 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 One more song, Brother Gary. All right. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang hapon dyan sa Pilipinas. And Shabbat Shalom. Let's sing Psalms 119. Yung Kof and Resh. Kof and Resh. All right. This is to remind us yung mga nakaraan nating singing verses para hindi po natin makalimutan. Kof and Resh. Psalms 119 from 145 until 160. Ako yung alilin mo. Ayan po kayo. Alright, let's sing this. I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Yahuwah. I will give them such truth. I cried unto thee, save me. And I shall give thy testimony. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried I hope in thy word. My eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice according and to thy loving kindness. O oh, Yahuwah, we can meet according to thy mishpah. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy Torah. Thou art dear to Yahuwah, and all thy commandments are true. Concerning thy testimonies, I have not a that thou hast founded of them forever. Concerning thy testimonies, I have no noble that thou hast founded them forever. 153. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget 
Dai Tora Lead my course and deliver me Quicken me according to thy word Yeshua is far from the weekend or they seek not such wait are thy tender mercies O Yahuwah quicken me according to thy judgment Many are my persecutors and mine enemies. Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved. Because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Yahuwah, according to the loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgment endureth forever. 160, one more time. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous wish, but endure it forever. Righteous wish, but endure it forever. Righteous wish, but endure it forever. Main and a main. Thank you, Brother Gary. So let's open our scriptures to Exodus. I'll just read one chapter to save time. We read this yesterday already. I'll just. Want to read a scripture here out of us, uh, including me have limited data so i'll go straight to the point but brother gary just uh if you have anything you would like to add hanggat na may data kami ay kami ay makikinig at uh we'll, we'll just maximize what we have all right so exodus chapter 25 let me just read for the whole chapter it says here and Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it with heart, ye shall take my offering, and ramskin, and badger skin, and shittim wood, all for the light, spices for the anointing of oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell within them. According to all that I shew thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. And they shall make it an ark of, of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without, shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make it make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark of the test the, the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work, shall thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cherub on the one end 
and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat, shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings and their faces, shall look one to another toward the mercy seat, shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Yashrael. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood, two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold and make thereto a crown of gold round about and thou shalt make unto it a border of hand breath round about and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about and thou shalt make for it four rings of gold put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table and thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with them and thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover withal of pure gold, shalt thou make them. And thou shalt set upon the table shewbread before me always. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, a beaten work shall the candlestick be made in his shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, his flowers shall be of the same, and six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knob and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlesticks, candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knobs and their flowers, and there shall be a knob under two branches of the same, and an op under two branches of the same, and an op under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick, their knobs and their branches shall be of the same, all it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it, and the tongs thereof, and the snuff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels, and look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shewed thee in the mouth. That's a very profound verse right there in verse 40. Make sure that the pattern is the same as what I am showing you in the mouth. Let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Our Father Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Elohim, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, our Elohim. Our Father, our Abba, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Holy One of Yashrael. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to worship you, allowing us, Father, to understand your word. Thank you, Father, for removing the veils in our hearts, the blindness of our eyes, and truly understanding your word. Thank you, Father, for the details that you give here that make us think and make us uh, dig deeper into your word. And help us understand the relevance of the shadow of things to come. But the body or the substance is Mashiach. I pray, dear Father, that as we read on and as we study more and more about your word, please give us understanding. There may be details to this morning that uh, may be hard to understand for the common here. But I know, Father, that you have put the Ruach HaKodesh in our hearts. You have put the Ruach HaKodesh so that we may understand and that he may give us understanding in everything that we will be studying. Thank you, Father, as you have said in First John that uh, he's our teacher and he is the only, he's the only one who can truly give us understanding in all of these. And I pray, dear Father, please guide us in our studies this morning and uh, remove any distraction that may hinder us from listening. Please organize my thoughts. The thoughts uh, of my brother, Brother Gary, Brother Danny, Brother Ivan, and everybody who is joining us today, I pray their Father na ikaw po ang magbigay kalinawan at uh, mag-organize na aming mga sasabihin din ngayong umaga. 
dalangin ko na ikaw po ang manguna sa amin sa aming pag-aaral as we continue to dig in your word like silver and like gold. And I pray, dear Father, please refine us. Refine us and make us come forth as gold. Thank you so much, Father, for this Feast of Sukkot. Thank you so much for letting us experience the wilderness. Thank you, Father, for the experience of uh, understanding also the murmuring of the children of Israel. And maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, for all of these things. Please open our eyes continue to work in our lives and all of these things we ask and pray in the most precious and most holy name our father Yahuwah and our mediator your son Yahusha Hamashiach Amen and Amen Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at uh, kung titignan nyo ay tumataas na po ang araw at magsisimula na rin po ang uh, murmuring ng mga Israelites dito sa wilderness <laughs> but uh, amazing lang po to experience uh, such here at 7. We arrived at 7 o'clock and uh, nung ganitong oras ay masaya pa po kami. Nag-set up at uh, nag-aayos ng aming mga gamit. Uh, having breakfast, having devotion. Pero nung pagdating na po ng mga uh, nag-enjoy pa kami ng uh, mga alas gis. Gumala po kami. Naglakad-lakad kami. Sa gitna ng aming pagagala. Medyo napapagod na. And Eventually, makikita nyo po yung mga video namin. Napakasaya po ng mga awitan nung simula. From verse 1, pero pagdating na po dun sa Let thy mercies come also unto. Makikita nyo po, para na po silang nagpapasyon. At para po sila yung mga negro na may hawak na kabaong na. <laughs> Mas masaya pa ngayon sa kanila eh. <laughs> Hanggang makabalik kami dito. No, Magpe-prepare na po kami ng land. This uh, shade, let me just, small shade right there. At kami shadow nung, nung shade. <laughs> Para kami si Jonah. <laughs> Sumusunod sa shadow nung shade. Ay, ang pinakaiba lang namin, wala kaming gourd. <laughs> and uh, it, was it was really hot. And um, I could feel yung... Uh, in my heart <laughs> na medyo nagre-reklamo na mainit but yun nga it teaches us how the Israelites why the Israelites were murmuring and why they were asking for bread they were asking for water and praise Yahuwah katabi po namin yung gripo dito uh, sa lahat po ng campsite na ito I think dalawa lang tong gripong to uh, it's, a, it's a lot of hectares ng property and praise Yahuwah, we were able to position ourselves malapit sa gripo na kung saan gumawa din kami ng aming paliguan na kahit uh, kakaunti lang, yung konting, na, na, naalala nyo yung kay Lazarus in the rich man, yung sabi niya kahit konting drop lang ng tubig and it was so refreshing just have having a bottle of water pour down your body and uh, ma-refresh lang and grabe po ka-importante ng tubig lalo na sa wilderness. So it's actually total reliance from Yahuwah. It's actually not murmuring, but rather asking Yahuwah for help, for mercy, for His grace. And kung makikita nyo po, very long-suffering din ang Panginoon, very gracious din. That when they ask, even when they were murmuring, Yahuwah provided water, provided the meat. And uh, it, just a trivia to think about. Pag-isipan nyo po ito. They were asking for meat. But remember, they had cattle, they had uh, sheep, they had... Uh, goats na i-offer bakit nila hindi yun bakit hindi yun ang kinain nila actually hindi ko rin alam yung sagot kaya ako tinatanong sa uh, just just a thought to think about but remember also it was asked for them as an offering okay so I just wanted to share the experience with you napakasaya po napakasaya na I hope my experience po nating lahat to do this it's uh, enjoyable. I know it's not totally camping. It's glamping kasi may tubig kami. Beside may CR kami, medyo malayo. But uh, pag, pag camping po kasi talagang wala. Ikaw yung maghuhukay. Ikaw yung maghahanap ng uh, pagdidisposan mo ng iyong mga <laughs> uh, kabigatan <laughs> sa physical. So, but it's amazing. I hope na sa mga taga UAE, I hope you can schedule your leave at least na magawa natin to next year I'm for sure I will take another uh, for every year 
uh, every year na nandito ako or even in the Philippines, we will take time to do Sukot. And it's really an eye-opener. Pag binasa mo yung Exodus, pag binasa mo yung Deuteronomy, yung mga paalala ni Moshe, it truly gives us understanding why they were murmuring and bakit after 40 years pinapaalalahanan sila ni Moshe and eventually nakalimot pa rin po sila. And ganun din po tayo mga tao ngayon. Madali tayo makalimot and I hope na matutunan natin. And kaya pinaparanas natin ng Panginoon ang mga bagay na ito. And uh, more importantly, it's a shadow of things of Yahushua HaMashiach. Remember, He tabernacled with us. In John chapter 1, verse 14, He will tabernacle with us once again in Revelation. Uh, at, uh, it's just amazing to understand all these prophecies. And I hope nakakasunod po tayo. Now, just a recap of what we were studying yesterday. I hope na, na nakuha nyo, I hope I was able to relay it to you. Uh, more importantly, the Ruach HaKodesh relaying that message that the tabernacle or the place the place of uh, habitation na ginawa ng Panginoon for us, the earth, His creation, we can relate it with the tabernacle. Okay? With the tabernacle na sabi niya, I will dwell with them. Napaganda po dyan sa verse, uh, chapter 25. Na sabi niya, verses 1 to 7, tell them to bring willingly to me kayo ang gagawa niyang tabernacle. And if you notice, sabi niya yung offering niyo, the first uh, mention is gold. The precious stones, silver, uh, brass, that's uh, the, yan yung cover, all right? Yan yung lay it over. And it's the very first thing that he asks of the people. Your most precious things, all right? At yan yung ipantatapal nyo dun sa shitim wood, dun sa Ark of the Covenant, and uh, everything that needs gold, yan po yung pinakaunang hiningi niya. And he, he specifically, specifically told Moshe, kailangan willing nilang ibigay. Alright? With a willing heart, you shall take my offering. Alright? You shall take, hinihingi ko, but willingly, they should give. Precious stones. Gano tayo, gano tayo ka-precious sa ating pera? Gano tayo ka-precious sa ating mga, uh, dun sa mga precious things natin? Ngayon nga, itong mga cellphone natin, it's no, actually, it's not precious. It's not precious. It's just a necessity that uh, we can use, katulad ngayon, we can connect to each other, but it's not precious. It will last one to two years. Eventually, yung aking mga pamangkin, naalala ko, nagsipalita na sila ng mga phone. And I remember that time, na binili nila Mamsi ni Papsi, uh, nirigalo po ng aking stepfather three years ago. It, just, it was just a while ago. Pero ngayon, si Rana, pero ang gold, it will just appreciate. It's something that will continue its value may value pa din po yan. Kahit patay na kayo, ipasa nyo yan, may value pa rin yan. Alright? Hindi yan nawawalan ng value. And then, makikita nyo, it's really gold ang nauna, and then silver, and then brass. And verse 4, it talks about the curtains. Alright? The blue, the purple. And take note, the blue has been always first. Okay? It's been always first. And uh, I've read uh, Torah portions, and I've studied Torah portions, that, that, that the stones where the covenant was given was engraved in sapphire stone. And it was actually, if you read the accounts in Exodus and I believe in Deuteronomy, makikita nyo na umaapoy pa yun nung binigay kay Moshe. Alright? And it was written by the hand of Yahuwah himself. So makikita nyo, bakit una ang blue? If you remember our studies about the chichit, it's also of blue. There's something about blue that Yahuwah uh, likes. If you go to the ocean, what's its color? Blue. If you look at the sky, it's blue. Alright? There's something special with the color blue. And uh, yan nga, makikita nyo, purple, scarlet. Scarlet has something to do with red. Alright? And if you remember the scarlet thread when they came into Jericho, sabi niya kay Rahab, put the scarlet thread. It's a symbol of Yah Yahusha's blood as well. It's a symbol that uh, can give us salvation. Okay? Yun yung nagbigay ng salvation kay Rahab. Uh, it's a symbol of the, the salvation, the Yeshua that we have in Yahusha, of His blood that covers us. And uh, we can see there also a fine linen, goat's hair, ram skin, dyed red, badger skin, and shittim wood. Yung shittim wood, 
is the structure. Alright? That is the structure. Yan yung pinaka tatayo as a tabernacle. It's not the gold. It's not the curtains. Obviously, the curtains will not stand on its own. So, yan po yung scale. Iutos niya na araw ay offering. You will see that in Daniel. That the daily offering. Okay? May daily offering yan. Since the time of Israel, uh, the covenant was established with Israel, ay tuloy-tuloy po yung light. For instance, and it has the spices for the anointing oil. Yan po yung nilalagay dun sa altar of incense. And uh, Brother Gary, can you prepare the, our image of uh, the details of the Ark? Ark of the Covenant. We'll just go into details of that. And then verse 7, it talks about the stones, all right, na ilalagay dun sa ephod na pag-aaralan natin in chapter 28, okay? I don't think we will reach that point today. Pero yan po yung ilalagay dun sa ephod, hindi po yan yung Apple ephod, <laughs> all right? Hindi po yan iPad. <laughs> ephod po yan, all right? Yan po yung nasa breastplate ng priests. Para yan, as I said, para yung astronaut suit. Because you're going into another realm. Think about it. You're going, if, if Yahush, Yah, Yahuwah said, the earth is my footstool and heaven is my throne, therefore, hindi naman tayo nakatira, nakatira, nasa loob tayo ng universe, but we're not floating around the universe. We don't see His habitation. I mean, we see it, but we don't know the, the, the magnitude of His habitation. So hindi natin alam. Pero Yahuwah said, I want to dwell with them. My rules apply my guidelines, my instructions, ito ang gagawin nyo. You offer it willingly. Bezalel will create all of this and uh, the Levites will, uh, will uh, help in creating all of these things. Pero yung offering, yung materials, sa inyong manggagaling. Alright? Sa inyong manggagaling, willingly. And uh, sabi niya dyan, and in the breastplate, verse 8, yan yung verse 1 to 7, yan yung materials nyo. Verse 8, and let them make me a sanctuary. Pwede ba natin ilagay? Baka mapanis. Patungkol na natin dito. Just a quick one. Sorry. Let me, let them make me a sanctuary. Okay? So, lahat ng instructions na yon, details, pero sabi niya, yan ang mga materialis nyo so that they can make me a sanctuary kasi gusto kong manirahan sa kanila. Within them. Alright? If you go to the Hebrew, it's actually within them. And it's an, a manahan. Manahan sa kanila. And it's actually uh, wait, wait. it's actually a prophecy that na uh, binanggit po uh, sabi sa scriptures and he shall be called Emmanuel. <laughs> Which being interpreted <laughs> <laughs> Elohim with us. Alright? So makikita natin. And yun nga, John 1, 14 says, and he tabernacled. Okay? And the word became flesh and tabernacled and dwelt among us. Tabernacled. Uh, dwelt means tabernacle. Even if you look at it and the Strong's Union first thing na lalabas, he tabernacled. And it's just amazing na gustong gusto ng Panginoon maka-fellowship tayo. Hindi niya tayo maka-fellowship. Bakit? We are corrupted. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Anong sabi ng scriptures? They have corrupted themselves. Their spot, the, the, their image, their, yung tatak nila is not the spot of Yahuwah's children. Okay? They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite Yahuwah? Kaya nga sabi niya, foolish nation. And we become foolish believers. Thinking that we've been believing a false Jesus Christ and we do not really see the light of uh, Yahuwah in Jesus Christ. Diba? How many times we, we read in the New Testament that Jesus Christ is saying, I and Yahuwah are one. I came from Yahuwah. My doctrine is not mine, but of Yahuwah. But we made our own doctrines by the, the, how we understood the writings of Apostle Paul and we neglected the whole Tanakh, the Old Testament at kinalimutan na natin, ay inabolish natin sa ating isipan yun. Bakit sinundan natin yung tinuro sa atin ng mga forefathers natin? Tinuro sa atin ni, 
nung mga naunang pastor sa atin, itinuro sa atin ni Brother MB before. All right? And if uh, I would admit na naipasa-pasa lang yung yung infallibility of the King James pinasa lang sa akin yun because of articles that I've read that's been very convincing. Actually, I still have those paper uh, at home pero nung nag naghahanap uh, ay nag titingin ako sa mga papeles namin I threw a lot of them out already because this is the only book that we really need ang salita po ng Panginoon ang kailangan lang natin and uh, even reading the King James ay makikita po natin that the Ruach HaKodesh will guide us into all truth if we just truly dig in deep katulad ng sinabi sa Proverbs chapter 2 that search is like silver hanapin nyo siya as like precious stones. Dahil kung hindi po natin sasaliksikin ang salita ng Panginoon, maluloko lang po tayo. Kaya nga po mahirap din na lumabas lang tayo, mag-soul winning tayo doon. Romans Road, kabisado na natin lahat yan. Kabisado yan ni Brother MB. Alam natin yung sequence na yan. But the question is, yung kausap mo ba is willing to truly search the word of Yahuwah? Kasi paano natin nakita? Paano, natin, paano tayo nang liwanagan sa pagbabasta din ng salita ng Panginoon? Yes, there were online references, but more so, there were a lot of challenges. There are a lot of questions. In my mind, bakit ako nasa isang relihiyon na pinipilit ako gawin ang isang bagay na hindi against sa salita ng Panginoon? It's talking about tithes, na hinihingi yung tithes ng misyon, pero ayaw ibigay yung tithes doon sa mission mismo, yun yung unang naging problema ko. The next problem was, a lot of people have uh, been against uh, me for preaching against Christmas. And then, I re- uh, long, long time back, nung binabasa namin for the second time or the third time ni Alma, nung sabay pa kami nagbabasa <laughs> ng scriptures, we realized that we should not be eating blood. Pero alam nyo, a lot of people have uh, been against that. Sabi nila, yung pastor namin kumakain ng dugo. So, ang daming tanong sa isip ko about post-trip, about pre-trip. Bakit kailangan natin pag-awayan ang mga bagay na yan? Bakit hindi natin pwedeng i-discuss really and read scripture and understand scripture about the Sabbath? I was talking to one Bible school student uh, six months ago, seven months ago. And sabi niya, sabi ko sa kanya yung Sabbath, we cannot neglect it. Pero anong sabi niya? Kausapin mo tong pastor na to. Baka maliwanagan ka niya. Kausapin mo tong pastor na to. Baka maliwanagan ka niya. Sabi ko, hindi. Direct sa salita. And the last time, what made, us, what made me realize all of these things, I preached about pork. Nawala lahat ng miyembro. Unti-unting nawala. I preached against the name Jesus. Okay? I preached about the name Jesus that is coming from Greek origins. And you cannot deny the fact it's Greek. It's Greek, for sure. Yan ako sigurado. It's Greek. Then you read the book of Maccabees, grabe lang ang timing ng Panginoon to show you the way, to show me the way to make these un- make me understand these things. I was reading the book of Maccabees, the Hellenization, they were being Greek. They were being uh, tortured for Nora, not keeping the, the Greek ways. Sige nga ba Greek ang pangalan sa Bible natin, ang pangalan ay siya. Going, uh, looking to the Jewish uh, Jewish uh, practices. Kasi, babalik at babalik ka dun sa Jewish roots eh. And then you realize, may sobra din silang nilalagay. So, itong mga Jews, sobra. Itong mga, uh, itong Jews, sobra at kulang. Itong mga Kristiyano, kulang din. Sobra din. Saan natin ilalagay yung tama? Balik ka ngayon sa scriptures. And then, Psalm 58, it shows you the way. It tells you, go to the old times. Repair the breaches. And then it talks about the Sabbath at the end. Sabi ko, ito yung tama. Nagpalit tayo ng pangalan ng old paths. Hanggang unti-unti, nag-alisa na yung mga tao. Calling us a cult, calling us a wicked path. But who cares? Alam nyo ang importante? You dig in. We may not be always right. We may not hit the right paths always. Pero it's a journey. It's a journey and as long as you walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. Psalm 119 verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled. How can you be undefiled? By searching the Torah? Ah, ito pala, bawal kong gawin. 
ah, ito pala dapat yung tinataha ko. Ah, ito pala bawal kong kainin. Ah, ito pala dapat yung araw na nananambahan ako. And then you get to understand his laws, his Torah, then you just follow that. There may be resources about marami. Maraming pwede pakinggan dyan. Ikaw ngayon ang maghihimay. Ikaw ngayon ang magtitest the scriptures. There's a ministry there that is called Test Everywhere. Is it Test Everywhere? And uh, prove all things. Yun yung mga paulit-ulit. And uh, you, you yourself should test. And it's, it's time for us to unlearn the lies. Okay? So babalik ako dun sa topic natin, tabernacle. Ginawa ng Panginoon yung Garden of Eden. He created that for us to, for us to inhabit there and for Him to dwell with Adam and Eve. Pero what did Adam and Eve do? They desecrated it and eventually nakik out sila. Because Yahuwah is holy. Sabi niya, para hindi na sila makalapit doon sa tree of life. Di ba? Keep them away from the tree of life. Hindi nila alam ingatan. Pero ngayon, gumawa ang Panginoon ng paraan. Ibalik natin. Kayo ang gumawa nung space ko. Kayo ang gumawa ng sanctuary ko. My terms. Pero you give it, uh, you willingly, because I gave you the garden of Eden willingly, kayo ang bumalik sa akin. No flaming sword. Just cherubims covering the tent. Has a veil. Tatlong partition. Remember what we studied yesterday? And pag-aralan nyo po yan. Pag, uh, just dig in deep. Pag-isipan nyo maigi. The three partitions, light and darkness, water. We cannot inhabit in water. But God created that space in between so that we can live. And this is a good parallel also in Genesis chapter 6. Kung makikita nyo, Ark of the Covenant, Noah, ginawa ng Panginoon ng Ark. Why? Remember, in chapter 1, The ruwak uh, moved upon the face of the waters. Yung ruwak ang nagrate. So basically, the earth was water, and that was Yahuwah's place. Ang panginoon kaya magduel don. Uh, ang panginoon kaya ng gumalaw doon sa sa water. But you can see when he instructed Noah, he asked him, "Ikaw ngayon gumawa ka ng sanctuary kung saan ka pweding mabuhay." You see that parallel again. Now he he asked Noah. Kaya nga, when when I made that uh, when we made that connection with the word uh, uh, kapur, kapur. Remember, kapurit, mercy seat. But also in uh, in Genesis chapter six, it's actually the word wikaparta. But it's it has the root word kapur. Cover it with pitch within and without. Waterproof it with pitch within and without. Because that waterproofing, that will cover you. That will save you. Atonement means to covered, to be covered by Yahusha's blood. To be covered na dapat tayo ay sakop niya. And remember that analysis also in Numbers chapter 35 verse 31. Nasabi niya, yung, your brother who is a murderer, you shall not take, you shall not take no satisfaction or hindi siya dapat, to, mag, hindi siya dapat mabayaran. Pag nakapatay siya, it's an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And yun yung sinasabi niya po, to cover. So, a ransom is to cover. And Yahusha has been a ransom. Napakaganda lang po na to relate all of these. And now, going back to the tabernacle, sabi niya, itong mercy seat, yan yung cover ng Ark of the Covenant. Ay, nung, yeah, cover of the Ark of the Covenant. And anong nasa loob ng mercy seat? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6, I believe. Go to Hebrews chapter 6. Okay, dito sa chapter 25 of Exodus, I'll just go into detail. Ayan po, you, you see the picture right there of uh, the Ark of the Covenant. I think it's not Hebrews chapter 6. Can you just help me find that? Uh, yung details, brother Gary, nung Ark. It's one of those. Verse 4? Ah, verse 4? Tama ba? Hebrews chapter 6? Verse 4? 6? Hindi. No. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Thank you. Chapter 9. Let's start with verse 1. Then verily the first covenant, okay, had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. Okay. It has the it, it had divine services. Kung titingnan niyo binasa natin chapter 25 of Exodus 27, it was a divine service pero worldly sanctuary. Kayo ang gagawa. 
Okay? For there was a tabernacle made for made the first wherein was the candlestick. So the instruction first, yeah, uh, Moshe was in the top of the mount and una instruction sa kanya, tabernacle. And then the priestly garments, the oil, actually the oil muna and then the priestly garments. Sabi niya dyan, uh, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread. Yan. I'll give you a detailed uh, analysis of that, which is called the sanctuary. Uh, Brother Gary, patingin ako nung, nung picture. Yeah, that is the inside. So makikita nyo yan, yung una, unang part sa kaliwa. Yan po, dyan yung makikita yung menorah, the shoe bread, and the sanctuary. Verse 3. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the Holy of Holies. On the right side or in the middle part, you can see the Holy of Holies. Na kung saan, yung pinos ni Brother Gary, contains the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? Uh, verse 3, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had mana. Nandun yung kanilang uh, memorial ng mana na hindi nasisira. Amazing. Yeah? Samantalang yung kinuha nila on, on the sixth day, hindi nasira on the seventh, pero yung kinuha nila every day, na they kept it until morning, nasira. And then you also have the Aaron's rod that budded. The, I believe this is the almond staff. Okay? And the tables of the covenant. The Ten Commandments. All right? Of Star Stone. Verse 5 and over it. The cherubims of glory shadowing cannot now speak particularly. Okay? So, pwede po kayo namipad dito. Meron akong illustration dito. Now, so balik tayo ngayon sa Exodus chapter 25. And I, this is a theory that I would like you to think about. So, bago po natin basahin, uh, Brother Gary, can you put me into full screen? Go to Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. The, we'll read the priestly blessing. And uh, this is just an analysis na pag-aralan din nyo, nyo din po. But it's a really good analysis that uh, I also found in my studies. Numbers chapter 6. Ay makikita po natin dyan. The priestly blessing at the end. Okay? Wherein, sabi po dyan in verse 22, And Yahweh spake unto Moshe saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Yashrael, saying unto them. Now, before I continue reading it, ano sabi ng scriptures? Sabi sa Exodus, and same in sec and, uh, First Peter, that we are going to be a generation of priests. Alright? We, we are going to be a peculiar people. At gusto ng Panginoon naging priest tayo. Bakit? Gusto niya ng fellowship. Hindi basta-basta lumalapit ang Panginoon. And if you notice, yung ark, ay yung tabernacle na yan, ay very holy na kung saan sila-sila lang po ang pwedeng pumasok. May, may, meron niyang mga posisyon na kung saan sila ay pwedeng pumasok and the high priest only can go to the Holy of Holies. Now let me read verse 24 and 27. And tandaan niyo po to sa mga nagkasama kong Baptist before, alam ko may awit nito. Ito yung ginagamit na benediction. Yahuwah bless thee and keep thee. Yahuwah make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahuwah lift up his face. It's the same word. Upon thee and give thee peace. His face be gracious unto thee. His face lift up and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yashrael and I will bless them. So, isipin nyo lang po yan. It's talking about a face. Alright? So, this morning, I want to show you an illustration. Dali lang ha? Okay. Napaka-high-tech nung aking... Ay, dali. Magulo, magulo eh, magulo. Alright. Uh, just bear with me. Anong nangyari? Nawala ako. <laughs> Dali lang ah. May X. Pag pinutok ko yung X. 
Mm-hmm. Ayan nga. Okay. So, pinakita po sa atin ni Brother Gary yung art of the covenant illustration. Dito po, I'm seeing I'm showing you a top view. Okay, of the art of the covenant. Top view. Okay? So, yung cooler po, think about it as the the tabernacle. You got the GoPro as the holy of holies. Okay? You got the GoPro as the holy of holies. Ano man bolte? Highlighter. Yeah, ako na mag-highlight. I'll put this as a veil. Eh, isa pang highlighter. Wala na. Ako meron. Okay. So, yan po yung veil. Okay. Now, you've got the shoe bread. You've got the menorah. You've got the altar of incense. Outside of the tabernacle, you've got the altar where they offer. All right? Now, just looking at it, it looks like a face. It looks like a face. Right? And he said, let my face, lift up my face. Shine upon them and give them peace. He specifically, tell Aaron, to his sons, this is a priestly blessing. Okay? And I, I'm telling you this is a, a theory. Okay? But it makes sense. Now, if it looks like a face, the Ark of the Covenant, which is the GoPro, that's actually I. Yeah, Sara. Brain down. Oh my God, yeah. Over battle of the brainless. Ay, balik tayo sa ating pag-aaral. So basically, what's inside the covenant? Uh, the Ark of the Covenant. The knowledge of the Torah. The covenant is there. Okay? And it's actually, hindi lang siya nakapatong doon. It's enclosed inside the Ark of the Covenant. And angels are guarding it. Tama? So my guard, merong nag-iingat nung knowledge. Kaya nga sabi, dun sa, um, sa armor of ano, helmet of salvation. For you to understand your Yeshua, you should understand the Torah. You should understand the, the covenant He made with His people. And nakagard po yan. And uh, binigyan ko kayo ng illustration. I hope you research it later on. Yung Constitution ng America. May special button yan sa Washington na kapag nagkagulo ang mundo at merong umataki sa Washington, pag pinindot nila yung boto na yun, it's guarded 24-7. It's guarded 24/7 at pag pinindot nila yung boto na yon magtatago yon yung yung ano in a in a safe sh- uh, shell na kung saan kahit masira na yung buong US nandun pa din yung kanilang constitution. Now think about this. Yung constitution ng Israel is guarded by angels, covered with gold. Ganun ka precious. Now let me ask you this question. Ano ang nasa forehead natin? It's our mark. Brethren, it's our mark. Di ba sabi niya? And this shall be a mark on your forehead and a sign of sign upon thy hands. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Thou shalt love Yahuwah with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And these things which I command you this day shall be in thine heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt thou bind them as a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Makikita niyo yung frontlets nito? Ano yung eyebrows niya? It's the veil. Alright? It's the veil. Makikita niyo may tabing, and then protected po yan, yung brain. Yung brain ba natin protected? Pag hindi ka uminom ng gamot, <laughs> nawawala yung brain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Masyado na tayong corrupted. Sorry kung hindi kayo makarelate kasi may hindi nakainom ng gamot dito kagahapon. Tsaka pag hindi siya kumain, hindi gumagana yung brain niya. <laughs> All right. So makikita na ngayon, the brain is protected. And it's the only place Yahuma, Yahuwa meets the high priest. So ngayon, 
gano'n natin pinoprotektahan yung tabernacle natin? Is it filled with the Torah? Filled with a simple prayer and likas ka we fail to see the truth, the light in Yahuwah's word. All right? He, who is that light? It's Yahusha. Right? Okay, let's move on. We've got... Ano tong dalawang two cell phones? It's the shoe bread and the menorah. Okay? The candlesticks. Anong ginagawa ng candlestick? It gives you... It gives you light. Pag walang light, kagabi, kung wala tayong ilaw, malamang hindi nyo na kami nakita. Right? It gives light within the, the tabernacle. Pero ito yung first portion. Inumpisan natin dun sa holiest of holy. Holies. And then, you've got the light, which is your eye. Sabi na ni Yahusha, di ba? Which is the light of your, your body. The eye. The eye. Di ba? And the, the menorah illustrates the the light and now if you go also to the book of revelation there are seven candlesticks if you go to uh which prophet Ze zephaniah or zechariah uh which talks about the candlesticks uh sasabihin sa inyo ni brother gary and mama <laughs> the candlesticks uh the two olives olives uh sticks but uh it, it makikita niyan over and over in scripture so, basic, it gives light. Your eyes should be giving light. Getting light as well. Shoe bread. Just by the name itself. Show bread. Uh, yeah, it's, it's for show. It's something you see. About what? The bread. It's a bread of life. It, it, it's, it, it, it's representing na dapat, na, alam niyo yung shoe bread na to, pinapalitan to, I believe, weekly. Uh, regularly. Alright? Kasi nasisira yung bread eh. So pinapalitan to, it's a table to show the bread. And it's actually also showing us that we should continuously uh, replenish the, the bread in our lives. Okay? Kaya nga siya, shoe bread, kasi nakikita. Dapat nakikita siya doon sa tabernacle. Alright? And regularly pinapalitan yun ng mga priests. And then, you have the altar of incense. Pag may insenso, the sense of smell. Alright? So, halimbawa, kung ito yung, kung ito si high priest, tatanggalin ko muna, isa muna yung eyebrow niya. Kung ito si high priest, alright, si Nadab and Nabihu, gumawa ng, ng strange fire, tukutukutukutuk, pumasok siya dito ngayon. Tak, patay! ba? So, sabi ng Panginoon, mali, 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 mali ang ginagawa nyo. And then also you will see in the instructions in the day of atonement sabe the high priest will get the incense of uh, the fire of uh, from the incense altar ito yung incense altar may bango yan sabi niya siya magdadala niyan dito he offers the fire and that fire will meet with a cloud okay so yung naaamoy mo okay so napakaganda illustration because if you see ito mata the veil and the brain and then you've got the altar of incense gustong gusto ng panginoon yung naaamoy niya kapag tama yung offering okay hindi natin alam kung ano inoffer ni Nadab and Abihu but it was strange fire he had specific instructions and actually kung titingnan niyo yung pabango ng panginoon bawal gawin sa ibang tao sabi niya i i, I can't remember where it was but if you read the torah yung perfume na gagawin niyo cannot be made in your homes. It's specific for the sanctuary. It's only for the sanctuary. Walang ibang pwedeng gumawa niyan, yung smell niyan, hindi niyo pwedeng gayahin. Hindi katulad ng aficionado ngayon na para puro peke yung amoy, na gayang-gaya yung amoy. Yung kanyang amoy, that's distinct and that's only mine, sabi ng Panginoon. Anyone, actually, I believe, alright, correct me if I'm wrong, but he says anyone who does that will be cut off. Kung gagayahin nyo, gagawin nyo pabango sa bahay, you will be cut off. Okay? And as I said, correct me if I'm wrong, kung iba yung punishment, but I believe yun yung natatandaan ko. Alright? So, altar of incense, ang Panginoon din ang nag-i-instruct ng pabango dyan. 
ngayon, tede, nakasmile yan. Kaya ako binuksan yan. Nakangit eh. Ah, ano yan? The mouth. That's the altar. That's where the, the slain, where all the slain animals are go. Tama? It's the mouth. It's all where the offerings go. It's where jaan po pinapatay lahat. Okay, nasa labas na po ito. And remember, if this is your tabernacle, may bakod po yan dito, may bakod sa, may bakod sa kanan. The people can enter up to here. Okay? The common people, the Israelites, can come up to here to give their offering dito sa altar. Nadadalihin dito nung priest. Okay? The, the priest can only enter here. Okay? This area. And it's the only the high priest that can enter here. So makikita nyo yung separations. May filter. Sino lang ang makakapasok? Yung talagang tinalaga ng Panginoon at yung susunod ng instructions para makapasok siya. Tayo basta-basta na lang. Tumawag ka lang sa pangalan ni Jesus Christ. Ligtas ka na without truly understanding the holy process of this tabernacle. And you see, babalik ako dito, this is the most important. This is your brain. This is the knowledge. This is what is protected. At sabi ng Panginoon, anong pinotektahan niya doon sa Garden of Eden? The tree of life na sabi niya, in case na lapitan nila at uh, masira, di ba? And ito, grabe ka protektado to. Nung hinawakan nga to nung kay David, remember? Ni, ano pangalan nun? Si Uza. Okay? Si Uza, bakit? Nilagay nila sa baka. Eh yung baka, ganun maglaka, di ba? Ganyan, oh, maalog. <laughs> uh, so nung umalog, hindi, hindi nila alam yung process eh. So Uza died. So makikita natin how this, this portion is protected. Pero the importance of this, the details of this that you can read, In uh, Exodus 25, has relevance. Lahat po yan may relevance. The offering, the the smell, the offerings here. Okay? Nandito ka pa lang. I, uh, dali, nangungulekta ng basura eh. <laughs> so, makikita nyo, ang tao mag-offer. Yes. Eventually, sabi ng Panginoon, pwede naman kayo mag-offer. Pero, the priest will take care of it. So, going to the New Testament, anong sabi ngayon doon? Narinunig nyo pa ba ako, Brother Gary? Anong sabi sa New Testament? I beseech you therefore, brethren. Romans chapter 12. Why? Apostle Paul has explained the grace of Yahusha, has explained His mercy upon us from Romans chapter 1 to chapter 11. He actually explains na ang salvation, ang Yeshua ay para sa lahat. If they are willing to understand His covenant with His people, So ngayon, in chapter 12, verse 1, sabi niya, nakikiusap ako sa inyo. Grabe ang biyaya ng Panginoon. By the mercies of God, grabe ang awa niya sa inyo, sa ating lahat, that you present your bodies. Nandito pa lang tayo sa eryang to. A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you. Reasonable service. Saan ang, saan ang, yan to? Nandito pala name of Jesus Christ. Believe, believe. Walang umaabot dito sa knowledge. Kasi wala tayong objective, puro offer lang. And what we thought, what we thought was when we offer, pag sinabi ng church na ganito, mag soul winning ka, mag choir ka, mag, uh, mag Bible study ka, We think that that is our service to Yahuwah. Yun yung akala nating paglilingkod. Pero kung babasahin mo sa Old Testament, sila nung mga ng promise land. Magsolwi ni kayo doon. Hindi nga sa uwi. And how come ngayon panahon natin, sa tingin nyo, na ng Panginoon lahat ng hidden ways natin, it doesn't make sense. He's given His covenant. Nabasa namin sa Deuteronomy kahapon. It talks about, it, it, it says, My laws, if you obey my laws, my statutes, my judgments, it will make you a great nation. And I will be with you. And I will take care of you. So ang tanong, anong nangyari? Bakit natin pinalitan ang doktrina ng Panginoon? Dahil sa mga sulat ni Apostle Paul, 
mali ang pagkakain hindi natin we just really going out sabi doon sa first Corinthians chapter 6 we read for glory by Yahuwah and in your spirit which are Yahuwah you are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh so ngayon kung common na tao ka basta-basta ka ba makakapasok dito sa Torah hindi first of all yung holy acceptable tayo gumawa ng speculation natin ah, basta basta I mean, I, I'm not saying that he's the Messiah. He's shown us the way. He is the light. He is the Torah. So it clearly shows us kung siya yung picture nitong tabernacle, ibig sabihin, he, he fulfilled this tabernacle in his life. From offering for living the Torah and showing us the light in the menorah, showing us the, the living bread. Makikita nyo lahat ng parallel dun. He is the light. He is the bread of life. He is, uh, he is everything na mababasa nyo sa scriptures. At kung hindi natin pag-aaralan to, wala lang. Papasadahan lang. I've read this how many times? The 15th time I've read it? Ano lang? Binabasa ko lang. Okay, tabernacle. Okay, priestly garments. Pero ngayon, knowing the details, you understand who Yahushua HaMashiach is in the Torah. And it's actually a shadow. And ibabalikan ko tong yung pinaka-importanting part. This one. The Torah. Their covenant. It's not actually just the Torah. It's the covenant. The Ark. Kaya nga po ang tawag? Ark of the Covenant. Marriage contract. Tama? 24. Exodus 24. Marriage contract. So I hope it's clear now. I mean, I hope it gives us understanding. Okay? I, I, I cannot expect, I let the Ruach HaKodesh make us understand these things. And I, I'm telling you, my, my insight kayong nalaman, meron, meron kayong gustong idagdag, share it. Because it's just amazing to understand all these details and uh, get to know who Yahusha is really, who Yahusha really is. Brother Gary, would you like to uh, say something, add anything. All right. Uh, napakagandang makita natin kung ano yung ano yung purpose ng tabernacle, ano yung pinapakita ng tabernacle. I just share yung ating presentation kanina. Uh, hold on for a while. All right. Kita nyo po yan. Yan po yung pinag-uusapan natin. Yan po yung inutos kay Moshe. All right. I'll read verse 16, chapter 25, number 16. Ang sabi po dyan, And thou shalt put into the ark, into the ark, the ark of the covenant, dun sa pinasa, sa, sa, uh, na sa holy of holies, the testimony which I shall give thee. Alright, kung titignan nyo, ang, ang utos sa kanya, yung ark of the covenant na ipapagawa ko sa'yo, ilalagay mo po dyan, yung testimony na ibibigay ko sa iyo ano po yung testimony yun po yung 10 commandments na sinasa na nakasulat sa sa stone pero kung titingnan niyo nasa chapter 25 na tayo yung yung Exodus chapter 20 nandun po yung 10 commandments so wag tayong malilito kasi yung chapter 25 nangyari na po ito bago pa nangyari yung chapter 20 Right? Hindi pa na ibibigay yung hindi pa na ibibigay yung 10 commandments inutos na ito kay Moshe. So, huwag kayong malilito kasi kung kasi baka isipin natin ibibigay niya pa lang yung 10 commandments kasi yun yung sabi niya sa verse 16. So, makita natin yung detalye na minsan pag nagbabasa tayo, hindi siya sunod-sunod. Yung pagkakalatag hindi po siya sunod-sunod. Kailangan lang natin maunawaan kung saan ang parte ng istorya nangyari yung isang 
yung isang kwento. Okay. So basically, yung, yung Ten Commandments na sa Exodus chapter 20, tapos itong chapter 25 is inuutos pa lang niya kay Moshe. Alright. Just to give you details on that para, para clear po sa atin. Now, sa ating mga screen, yan, ang, yan po yung yan yung tabernacle na pinag-uusapan natin. Alright. I'll just zoom in yung sa loob mismo ng tabernacle. Ito yung second screen natin. So, as he explained, as preacher explained a while ago, na sa loob yung Holy of Holies, nandyan po yung Ark of the Covenant, then nandito sa kaliwa nyo yung minora, yung kandila, ay yung ilaw, yung may, may pitong sanga. Okay? Then nasa kanan is yung showbread, which is nandyan yung tinapay. Then nandito yung nandyan yung uh, ark, uh, altar of incense na pagdating nyo po sa revelation, ano po yung ibig sabihin nun? Doon po yung prayer of the saints na napakabango para sa Panginoon. Yung usok nun is napakabango para sa Panginoon. Then paglabas nyo, pag lumabas tayo, is nandito sa harap, nakikita nyo po ito. Okay, nandyan po yung tubig. Okay, nandyan yung ba bron bronze basin ng tubig na bago ka pumasok is maguhugas ka muna. Then ito po yung sinasabi natin kanina na altar na may do bronze also and dyan po kinakatay or dyan sinusunog yung offerings right para sa Panginoon. Now, eh, isa po sa pwede nating makita rito is yung picture, ano ba talaga ito? Ano ang, ano ang pinapahiwatig sa atin ng Panginoon? Napakagandang mensahe nung, nung kapapaliwanag ni preacher. I just wanna add on that na kung titingnan nyo, pag nandito kayo sa loob, nandyan po yung Holy of Holies, nandyan yung Ark of the Covenant at ano ang nasa loob ng Ark of the Covenant? Tatlo po. Nandun yung Ten Commandments Nandun yung tungkod ni Aaron at nandun yung mana. Okay? So tatlo ang nasa loob ng Holy of Holies doon sa loob ng Ark of the Covenant. Guarded by the Kirubims. Alright? So nandun yung Torah. Okay? Nandun ang Ten Commandments. Then, paglabas natin sa Holy Place, nandyan yung altar. Alright? Nandito yung altar of incense. Nandito yung bread. Nandito ang light. And kung titingnan nyo po, ang sabi ng Panginoong Yahushua, ako yung tinapay, I am I am the bread of life. And sabi niya, and sabi rin, and sabi rin po ng Panginoong Yahusha, I am the light of the world. Okay? I am the light of the world. So kung titingnan niyo, yung Panginoon, ang Panginoong Yahuwa is lumabas sa Holy of Holies, nagkatawang tao yung Torah, the living Torah, which is ang Panginoong Yahusha, tapos nung dumating siya rito sa lupa, sinabi niya, hindi niyo naiintindihan ako yung living Torah at ako yung tinapay. Ako rin yung ilaw. Alright? Ako yung tinapay. Ako rin yung ilaw. Okay. Paglabas natin dito, andito yung ugasan. Andito yung tatawagan natin is mikbah. Alright? Paglabas natin dito, bago magpintuan, Andito yung sacrifice, sacrifice in-offer yung sacrifice, sac sacrifice yung mga offering dyan sinusunog. Kung titingnan nyo, from inner, from holy of holies, palabas, yan po ang design ng Panginoon kung paano niya tayo abutin. Kung paano niya pinakita yung pagmamahal sa atin. Alright? From the holy of holies, na nandoon ng Panginoong Yahuwah, okay? lumabas siya, yung Torah, naging living Torah, at nagkatawang tao ang Panginoong Yahusha, is dito sa holy place sa, sa holy place then paglabas niya ang sabi ang sa, ang nang nakita siya ni John the Baptist right binaptize siya at ang sabi ni John the Baptist behold ang sabi niya behold the lamb of god who take away the sins of the world and dito po inoffer right dito inoffer yung mga lamb so kung titingnan niyo from inner court from, from from the holy of holies palabas yan po yung pagpapakita ng Panginoon ng pagmamahal niya sa atin. Inabot niya tayo. Lumabas siya rito. Okay? Naging living Torah siya. Then binaptize siya ni John the Baptist. Then inoffer niya yung buhay niya. Okay? Now, paano makakarating doon sa Holy of Holies? Nandito tayo sa labas, sa east side. Just to add on that, yung tabernacle, nakaharap siya sa east. Yung pintuan niya na sa east. Yung yung Ark of the Covenant, which is nandun ang Panginoon, is nasa west side. Okay? Bakit? Kasi during that time, lahat po ng mga pagan practices is sumasamba sa araw. Sumasamba sa sun god. 
nakaharap sila sa East. So basically, kung nakaharap ka doon sa West, sinasabi ng Panginoon, huwag kang sasamba doon sa San God. Umarap ka sa akin. Okay, just to add, just to add on that. Now, paano makarating doon sa Holy of Holies? Papasok ka rito sa pintuan, from the East side, kailangan nung makita yung nagsakripisyo. Alright? Kailangan nating makita yung nagbigay ng buhay. Sino yun? Ang Panginoong Yahusha. Alright, kaya nga sinasabi natin sa New Testament na hi walang kaligtasan maliban sa pangalan ng Panginoong Yahusha. That's true. Alright? Kailangan nung maniwala. Kailangan nung manampalataya. Then after that, ano ang nangyayari? Nagpapabaptize tayo. That's the process. Same, with the, same happened with the Ethiopian eunuch. Sabi niya, may tubig dyan. Anong nagahad lang sa akin? Nananampalataya ako ng Panginoong Yahusha is Panginoon. May tubig dyan. Let's baptize. And, but, but ito mga kapatid, gusto ko makita nyo, ito ang nagiging problema. Okay? Pagkatapos nating maniwala doon sa nagsakripisyo ng buhay, sa nagbigay ng buhay para mawala yung mga kasalanan natin, para magkaroon tayo ng kapatawaran, para ipakita sa atin kung ano talaga yung tamang pagsunod sa Panginoon that you obey Yahuwah until the last breath. Hanggang kamatayan, pagkatapos nating i-baptize, hindi tayo pumapasok dito sa loob. Yung living Torah, hindi natin pinapractice. Ayan niyo po ang nagiging problema, napakalaking naging problema ng Christian world. Nakabilang tayo dyan yung panahon dati. Okay? Paikot-ikot lang tayo dito sa, sa, sa courtyard. Kung ano-anong pinagagawa natin, mag, mag, magkaroon tayo ng napakaraming ministry, paikot-ikot lang tayo dito. Pero nakalimutan natin i-practice yung living Torah. Alright. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi, ang principles natin dati, nung namatay ang Panginoong Yahusha, yung veil na nagahati dito sa Panginoon and sa mga tao is nahati at meron ka ng direct access ngayon sa Panginoon. That's correct. That's correct. But the problem is, we don't see the process kung paano, makikip, kung paano makakarating dun. Ang akala natin, diretsyo na. Alright? Ang akala natin, diretsyo na, hindi natin nauunawaan na kailangan mong ipamuhay kasi yung ipamuhay yung Torah kasi ang Panginoong Yahusha, binagbigay siya ng halimbawa kung paano ipapamuhay yon at kung paano yung tamang pagsunod. Ang akala natin direct access na, mali po yun. Right? Akala natin diretsyo na, na pag nananpalataya ka rito, nabaptize ka rito, diretsyo ka na dun. So, may proseso po, hindi sa paraan natin, kundi sa paraan ng Panginoon. Ang akala natin, pag mayroon tayong ministry na nagkumakanta tayo, nagsosol winning tayo, hindi po masama yun. Hindi humali yun kasi gagawin din po natin yun. Dapat ginagawa natin yun. We are the kingdom of priests. Ang plano ng Panginoon sa atin is mag maging tagapagturo tayo at maging refleksyon tayo ng kanyang pagmamahal. Dapat makita yun sa buhay natin. Dapat makita sa buhay natin kung ano yung karakter ng Panginoon. We are the kingdom of priests. Pero in His design. Hindi sa paraan natin. Okay? Ito ang problema. Pagtapos natin i-baptize, nag-iikot-ikot lang tayo sa courtyard. Hindi natin pinapamuhay yung living Torah. Kaya hindi tayo nakakaabot dun sa Holy of Holies. Alright? Ganun po yung disenyo ng tabernacle na napaka-profound ipinakita ng Panginoon yung kanyang pagmamahal sa atin. Inabot niya tayo. Yung living Torah, yung salita niya, nagkatawang tao, binigay yung buhay niya para ipakita sa atin yung pagmamahal niya. Tayo, Papasok tayo dito sa tabernacle ng Panginoon and dwelt with Him, believing on the sacrifice of Yahusha, baptizing, dapat ang susunod na step, pumasok ka doon sa living Torah. Kilalanin mo ang utos ng Panginoon kasi napaka-protected noon. Ginagardyahan yun ng dalawang cherubims. Hindi basta makapasok ang kahit sino lang. Pag pumasok ka, mamamatay ka. Ganun siya kaprotektado. Ganun siya kaholy. Pero lumabas yun dito. Ipinakita niya kung paano ipamuhay yun. Gawin din natin mga kapatid. Okay? Walang shortcut. Hindi po pwedeng tapos na. Hindi po pwedeng ginawa niya na wala na akong gagawin. Kung ang ganun ang principles natin, mga kapatid, hindi tayo magiging overcomer. Makikita niya sa Revelation, to whom that overcome it, to whom that overcome it, ano ang in-overcome ng mga tao na yun? Ano ang dapat i-overcome? Ang kasalanan. At ano ang kasalanan? Sin. Lagi nang tatandaan, sin is the transgression of the Torah. Napakalino yun. Sin is the transgression of the Torah. Huwag tayong magpaikot-ikot dito. Huwag tayong magpaikot-ikot sa courtyard. Kilala natin, natin yung living Torah, ipamuhay natin, and makakadirect na tayo sa Panginoon. Sa Panginoong Yahuwah. Alright? So yan po yung picture ng tabernacle.
Sir. Amen, amen. Amen. Dami. Dami. Change location kami. <laughs> It's amazing. Makita natin yun. Expounding on that. Yung in-explain ni Brother Gary. Kasi kung titignan nyo, he's actually, he, he fulfilled the Torah. So what did he do? He came outside. Yes. He came outside. First niyang ginawa niya is the mikvah. Alright? Why? Because Yahokanon is a Levite. Yeah. Alright? He is a Levite and he had power. He had authority. Remember, uh, it was the Levites who had access to the temple. They were given the instructions. Alright? May, may, meron po yung ano, sequence. The Nethanims, sila yung mga assistant ni Levites. The Levites were the workers. And the priests, sila yung may access dun sa loob. Now, Yahukanon was uh, pinanganak siya uh, through Elizabeth who is from the priestly lineage as well. And you can see that Zacharias was doing their, their uh, priestly service. Okay? So, makikita natin na in order. Now, I just wanted to add this bit kasi in the Old Testament, wala po kayo makikitang Pharisees, wala kayo makikitang Sadducees. In the Old Testament, that responsibility were given to the priests and the Levites. Alright? Pero in the New Testament, biglang nagkaroon ng, ng Pharisees, biglang nagkaroon ng Sadducees. The scribes are there. Why? The scribes are the ones who are copying the, the Torah, the Tanakh. Pero yung Pharisees, saan to galing? Now, it's actually a man-made uh, body, parang mga Bible school lang, right? It's a man-made body of uh, people who say we are experts in the Torah. All right, we are experts. Alam namin ito. So kaya nga makikita mo si Apostle Paul when he said, "I am a Pharisee of the Pharisees, circumcised the eighth day." But remember, he was not part of the priestly lineage because he was not a Levite. He was a Benjamite. Pero nung naintindihan niya yung sequence nitong Torah, sabi niya, I count them all but dung. Bakit? Naintindihan niya ngayon yung process. I count them all but dung. Pero sabi niya, bakit? That I may know Him. Philippians chapter 1. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. Sabi niya, para mas maintindihan ko tong process na to. Kasi na, na, naintindihan niya, yung pagiging pariseyo ko, it's actually not biblical. Alright? It's not, it's not scriptural. Yes, I may know the Tanah, I may know the Old Testament, I may know the Bible, I may be preaching the Bible for 20 years, for 10 years. The question is, are we following Yahuwah's instruction? Now, here's the point. The patterns, remember, binasa natin, In Exodus chapter 25, make sure you do the, the pattern I showed it you in the mount. And this is an important event. Okay? So, lumabas ang Panginoon. Siya mismo yung lumabas. From the Holy of Holies. Lumabas siya. Pinakita niya sa atin step by step. Mikvah. Immersion. Cleansing. Then he offered himself as a sacrifice. Now remember, He's also the high priest yes. that can only enter the Holy of Holies. He's the only one who can show us the shoe bread. Bakit? He is the living bread. He is the light of the world. At siya po din ang naging sweet savor, sweet smelling savor sa ilong ng Panginoon so that we can get access to Yahuwah. Don't forget, ang focus natin is Yahuwah. Yahusha showed us the way. Alright? Kaya nga sabi niya, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. The commandment is a lamp, and the Torah is light. Alright? He is the light. Kaya nga, napaka profound nito, na dati, ako personally, I would tell you, dati ini-skip ko lang to sa akin. Hindi ko ini-skip, binabasa ko lang. Okay, ito yung tabernacle. Ah, okay, ito yung priestly garments. Tapos excited na ako yung susunod. Ah, yan na yung golden cat. That's exciting. That's a story. 
Pwedeng pampelikula yan. Yung tabernacle, hindi masyadong pampelikula kasi puro detalye. Picture lang pwede na. Pero now you see the process. You see the shadow of things to come that has come already. And also a shadow of things to come about tabernacling with Yahusha later on in the book of Revelation. It gives more meaning. It gives us more understanding of the Torah. Ngayon, binuwag ba ng Panginoon ng Torah? No. It's giving you a clear picture. Balikan ko yung priestly blessing. Let His face shine upon you and give and His grace be gracious unto you and His lift up His face on you and give you peace. His face is looking towards us. He's giving you an illustration, a top view of His face. Ang kailangan lang natin makita yung mukha niya and understand ito pala yung fulfillment ng Torah na sinasabi ni Yahusha. Ito pala yung sabi niya, I came not to destroy that, that Torah. That, I came not to destroy those instructions in Exodus 25. Hindi ko, hindi ko sinira yun. Natapos na yun. Yes, natapos. It has passed away. Pero He did not come to destroy it. He's showing you a picture. Ganito ka ngayon titingin sa Panginoon. He's showing you a picture. This is Yahuwah's face. Tingnan mo ngayon yung picture ng sarili mo. How do I offer myself as a living sacrifice? How do I get to the Holy of Holies? How can I protect my own forehead, my own uh, frontlets between my eyes? How can I put that sign on my hand? Sign sa kamay, frontlets between thine eyes. The Torah should be here. It should be protected. And katulad ng Panginoon who put those angels in the Garden of Eden to usher them away, to keep them away, sabi ng Panginoon, kayo ang gumawa ng paraan niya. Kayo ang gumawa ng way niyo sa instructions ko, kayo ang lumapit sa akin niya. Dati libre. And you go to the book of Revelation, sabi ng scriptures, those who follow the commandments will have access to the tree of life. He is making a way. We are on that journey. We are in the wilderness. At gusto ng Panginoon matuto tayo. He wants us to humble down. He wants to humble us. And to prove us what is in thine heart. Kaya nga refining, mga kapatid. Anong, anong, anong process natin dati? Paramihan. Di ba? Paramihan tayo. And uh, may pinakita sa akin uh, ano si Alma. Uh, it's a, a pastor that preaches against soul winning. Hindi niya sinasabing mali yung soul winning but the term itself, bakit? It's become a competition. It's become a competition. Ilan sa'yo? Sampo. Ilan sa'yo? Dose. Mas marami ako. Di ba? Ilan sa'yo? Bente. Uh, Di ba? Tapos pag, pag, pag dalawa lang parang hiyang-hiya ka. Bakit? It's become a competition. Now the question is, are we teaching them Torah? Are we teaching them the law? Or are we, okay, listen, are we making them proselytes? Double the children of hell. Bakit? Tinuturo ba natin yung Torah before? No. Paikot-ikot lang. Paikot-ikot lang yung mensahe. Yung prodigal son, paikot-ikot lang. Hindi natin naintindihan yung prodigal son. Yung parables, we just we just do our own interpretations of whatever whatever parables but you see it, now you see the light of the torah you will understand parables better you will understand about the 10 virgins the parable of the two sons the prodigal son it's actually the two houses of israel you, we get to understand all these things No, no. We got just we blinded. it. Bakit? Hindi natin sa church natin yan. Ay, hindi naniniwala sa Christmas. Ay, hindi yan pwede sa atin. Huwag niyong pagpipreachin yan dito sa congregation na yan. Di ba? Ay, kumakain siya. Ng, hindi siya kumakain ng dugo. Ay, hindi. Ano na yan? Malapit na yan sa iglesia ni Cristo. Tanggalin yan. And we become very conceited and very proud of what we know, thinking we know something, but we really don't know anything. Mga kapatid, this is life. And we can discuss. If you see something wrong sa aking tinuro kanina about the face, then raise it up. Baka may problema tayo doon. Baka may, may wrong analogy. 
That's fine. We can discuss. Mas maganda na maunawaan natin na nag-uusap-usap tayo. Nagbabasa ka ng scripture. Nagbabasa ako ng scripture. We analyze and Yahweh gives us enlightenment. Gives us uh, uh, shows us the light. He is the light. And uh, hindi natin makukuha lahat ngayon. That's for a truth because His Word sabi nga ng um, Romans chapter 14, <laughs> Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of Yahuwah. How unsearchable are His ways and uh, unsearchable are His ways and His thoughts are very deep. Mga kapatid, yung ocean, wala pang nakakarating sa pinakailalim. Tapos, ikukumpara natin yung salita ng Panginoon, alam na natin lahat. Ay pag may nakarating na sa pinakailalim ng ocean, baka maniwala ako na may nakaunawa na ng lahat. But for now, we are on this journey of humbling. We are on this journey, Yahweh knowing our hearts before He gives us that promised land. Okay? So I hope, malinaw po yung ating pag-aaral ngayon. That His face and yung process that in explains sa atin ni Brother Gary, he went out from the Holy of Holies. Then he fulfilled this tabernacle. Papasok. Anong una? Sabi niya kay Yahukan, sabi niya Yahukan noon, hindi ako worthy na i-immerse ka sa mikvah. I'm not worthy to to do this, uh, this, uh, this ritual for you. Sabi niya Yahusha, suffer it to be done. Alright? To fulfill all righteousness. Bakit? Yun yung pattern eh. Maglinis ka muna bago ka maging high priest. Maglinis ka muna bago ka mag-service. Ginawa. Ang Panginoong Yahu siya mismo. Sinunod niya yung pattern ng Panginoon. And then, dumating siya dun sa sacrifice hanggang he is the high priest that can lead us to the Holy of Holies. It's not just about believing Jesus' name. Actually, the name above all names is Yahuwah. Yahuwah is the name above all names. Sabi niya, I am Yahuwah. That is my name and my glory. I will not give to another. Alright? Hindi niya ibibigay kahit malapit pa yan na transliteration na naging nagkaroon ng sus sa huli. His name is Hebrew. And Yahusha sabi niya, I come in my Father's name. Pag may ibang dumating in another's name, siya yung pinaniniwalaan nyo. Pero the one coming in his father's name, Yah is Yeshua. Yeshua. And it gives us a, a, a pattern along the way. Pag pinag-aralan mo, Joshua, anong pangalan niya? Before. Hosea. Tama? Hosea, the son of Nan. Pero nung tinawag siya ni Moshe, Joshua na ang pangalan mo. Yahusha. In, in Hebrew. Hosea. Is the same word. Hosea, the book of Hosea, the prophet, means salvation. And ngayon, naalala nyo, he came into uh, is it Jerusalem with, on the donkey. Ano sabi ng mga tao? Hosanna. It's Hosea noon. Hosea noon. Hosanna. Hosanna to the highest. Hosea. Hosanna to the son of David. Di ba? Hosea bin David. Save us, son of David. Yun yung sinasabi nila. Alam natin Greek, Hosanna. Kanta-kanta tayo, Hosanna. We say hallelujah. It's got ya. And it's praising ya. Hallelujah. And kung makikita mo yung pangalan ni Yahusha, he's bringing the Father's name. The, ba, uh, the name above every name. Yahuwah. Alright? So I hope that illustration, wala pa tayo dun sa space suit. Okay? And that we'll study that next week. Bakit? Hindi ka basta basta pwede pumunta. Try mo, pumunta kang outer space. Wala kang space suit. Patay ka dun. Patay ka dun. Paglabas pa lang nung sa atmosphere nung ano, baka dun pa lang sa spaceship, sa sobrang bilis nun, patay ka na. Eh ang Panginoon, sabi niya, heaven is my throne. It's a different it's a different atmosphere. And sabi niya, let the priests wear this. Ayan po ang pag-aaralan natin next. 
Anything you would like to add, Brother Gary, uh, Brother Danny, Brother Ivan, and anybody there? <laughs> may gusto po ba kayong idagdag? May gusto kayong tanong? Feel free before we conclude. I hope you learned something. All right. Idadagdag ko lang po ito. Turn your scriptures in the book of John chapter 6. Amen. John chapter 6. Para hindi tayo magpaikot-ikot sa courtyard. <laughs> John chapter 6. I'll start reading verse 9. Okay, John chapter 6, 35. Sabi po, And Yahusha said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Sabi ng Panginoong Yahusha, nakita niyo ako, hindi kayo naniwala eh. And the same, ta- the same sa atin ngayon. Nakita niyo ako, Pero, hindi rin kayo naniniwala. Maaring sinasabi niyo, naniniwala naman kami. But you are professing with your mouth. Pero yung puso mo, wala talaga sa Panginoon. Alright, I'll continue verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. All that Father giveth me shall come to me. I'll continue 38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Okay? And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Ito yung will ng Panginoong Yahuwah. Na wala dapat mapahamak. That everybody should have eternal life. Okay? Alright, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seek the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last days. Every time na mababasa nyo itong believe it na word, dapat nauunawaan natin ngayon ano talaga ang ibig sabihin niyan. Hindi yan by professing with your mouth. Okay? Hindi yan basta sa sinabi mo lang, I believe in Yahushua and that's it. And tapos na. Hindi po ganun ang ibig sabihin niyan. Verse 41. The Jews did murmur at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? Yahushua therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me, had sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. So makikita nyo, it's more on reference lagi sa Ama. Lagi ang reference niya is sa Panginoong Yahuwa. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of Elohim. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, come it unto me. This is direct from Panginoong Yahusha, mga kapatid. Ang sabi niya, every man that hath heard and learned of who? Of Yahuwa kamet unto me. Okay? So kung pumupunta ka sa, sa Jesus Christ, pero hindi mo kilala yung Ama, ibang Jesus Christ yan. Right? Hindi yan yung Panginoong Yahushua. Okay? Verse 46, Not that any man had seen the Father, save he, was of, he is of Elohim, he had seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Yung bread na nandyan sa loob ng sanctuary, yung katapat ng minora, sabi niya, ako yan. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. That this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Again, on verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, alright, ito napaka-importante yung phrase yan. If any man eat this bread, tapusin ka lang, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for life of the world. Sinasabi niya, kung sino man yung kumain ng bread na to, he shall live forever. And, ang mga thinking natin dati is, yun, tatanggapin ko lang siya, ayos na. What he's trying to say, mga kapatid, is, if any man follow my example, kung paano ang tamang pagsunod sa utos ng Panginoong Yahuwah hanggang kamatayan, he shall live forever. If any man eat of this bread, if any man follow my example, he shall live forever. And that bread I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Okay? 
Yung so, sinasabi niya, for whosoever, sa so Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Na hanggang kamatayan, dapat matuto tayong sumunod sa utos ng Panginoon. Kasi kung hinahanap mo yung buhay sa mundong ito, mawawala yan. But any man who seek his life for Yahuwah's sake, for Yahuwah's sake, sabi niya, shall find it. Okay? I'll continue lang. Verse 52. Then the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? Then Yahushua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him, As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Inulit niya ulit sa last part na yun. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. He that obey the commandments, he that follow my example shall live forever. Forever. Mga kapatid, huwag tayong magpaikot-ikot sa courtyard. Alright? Let's go inside and eat that bread. Kasi lumabas po ang Panginoon para magkaroon tayo ng kaligtasan. Shabbat shalom! And naway maging blessing po yung lesson na to para sa ating lahat. Amen, amen. Uh, just amazing. Amazing. Ang dami pong... There's so much to learn from this and... Uh, ang sarap lang po pag-usapan. Ang sarap pag-aralan. Yeah. And, uh, sir Ice, and kung hindi po kayo nakapag- uh, just continue with us. And maunuan din po natin yan. Ninyo, unti-unti. And uh, just keep on. Ito po yung importante. Keep on searching the scriptures. That's what Yahushua said. Search the scriptures. Uh, they are the day which testify of me. All right. The scriptures is what testifies of Yahusha. And kita kita po natin. That illustration of the tabernacle is Yahusha himself going in and out and going back in. And see, no, the, ang, ang problema kasi po natin nung napunit na yung veil, nung namatay siya, ayun, kita mo, kita mo, may diretsong access na tayo sa Panginoon. Pero hindi natin naiintindihan yung process eh. That it's still Yahusha who is in that veil who is in uh, who is who has become our access. Kaya nga siya po yung mediator. Alright? Kaya, kaya may meron pa ding ano dun kortina. Pero nung napunit yon si Yahusha pinakita niya yung process. And all we need to do is go back to His Word, understand the four shadows, understand the real substance. And once we get to understand that, it's life. Sabi nga ni Moshe, it's life for you. Why? Choose life. Why are you going to choose the curses? And katulad ng sinabi ko kahapon, the Philippines itself, mas makapal pa yung constitution kesa sa Torah. The Torah has 600 plus laws. Tapos ang... Objection agad ng tao. Wala na yan, inabolish na yan ng Panginoon. Hindi pa nga natin binabase. Hindi pa nga natin tinanray ng tingnan. Most of it, we do it already. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not see the nakedness of your, thy mother, thy sister. It's basic. Tapos pag may hindi tayo maintindihan, kita mo, kita mo, patay agad, patay. Bakit tayo nagpo-focus dun sa patay? Bakit hindi natin makita yung buhay? Di ba? It's life. It's life for us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He that no one cometh unto the Father but by me. Paano nakakarating ng Holy of Holies? His way. The Father's way. Not by any other's way. So sabi niya, ako yung daan. Tignan niyo yung Torah. Because that will show you it testifies of me. Sabi ni Yahushua. So I hope our study... 
today has been productive and fruitful for all of you, for all of us. It's been very productive for me, and I believe for Brother Gary and the rest of my brethren here. We've got uh, somebody from uh, Torah in the Philippines, I believe. See Faye, and thank you for joining us. And feel free to share the word. And I will. I will also say we may not always get it right, but uh, we we test the scriptures. We study resources from the internet as well. The resources, very not. We all test it with scripture and. Uh, I hope we can invite more people to join us in our studies now. We have to spread the light. All right, We have to teach them. We have to teach the people Torah. And if Yahuwah opens their heart to the Torah, then alam niyo, masarap lang pag-usap. Pag hindi namin kayo tinatanggap dito. Joke lang. Joke lang po yan. Joke lang yan. Hindi ka hindi tayo that gives me uh, gives me makes me think pero yun nga it's just we'll all know of this when Yahushua comes back and will teach us the Torah will teach us properly the Torah and he will remove the deceiver pero ngayong nasa wilderness tayo let's just keep digging all right so, Brother Danny, may nais ka po bang sabihin? Hindi kita nakikita. Andiyan ka ba? Amen. Amen. Brother Danny. This is Brother Pam Pam Ivan. Sino like po? Sis uh, Pam? Pam po. Sa US po siya ngayon. Kaya madaling wow. araw na. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, Faye. And uh, also to my sister and my brother who are still there. Apat lang kasi yung maximum sa telepono eh. Thank you for okay, thank joining you, us, Mama Edna. Uh, Yahweh bless you all. And tayo po'y manalangin. Let's pray. Our Father Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Elohim, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Elohim of Moshe, Elohim of Joshua, Elohim of David, Elohim of Solomon, Elohim of our forefathers the one who gave us the Torah, the one who gave his covenant to the children of Yashrael, the Holy One of Yashrael, the one who meets with the high priest in the Holy of Holies. Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to uh, experience Sukkot. I know Nipo hindi lahat nasusunod namin, especially for going to Jerusalem. The, cho- the place that you have chose. But I pray, dear Father, na darating kami sa time na yun, na ma-observe namin fully ang iyong Torah. But I pray, dear Father, na makita mo po ang aming mga puso't isipan and truly striving to know your word, striving to understand, Father, yung mga nais mo pong ipaalam sa amin. And uh, maraming maraming salamat po for opening our eyes to the truth. Father, salamat po sa provision mo sa araw na ito our daily bread the shoe bread that was in uh, that tabernacle that was replaced daily so that they will be reminded of your provision of the manna also the the light that you have shown us Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, for all of these things. And I pray, dear Father, sa lahat po nang nakinig ngayon sa amin at makikinig pa sa i-upload na aming Torah portion, I pray, dear Father, na ikaw po ang patuloy na kumilos at uh, magbukas ng puso't isipan. At uh, muli, Panginoon, ilalapit ko sa iyo ang aking mga kapatiran na nakasama noon sa paglilingkod na akala namin tama, Panginoon, dalangin ko na ikaw po magbukas ng kanilang puso't isipan. Ikaw po, Panginoon, ang mag-enlighten sa kanila. Maging aming mga kamag-anak na bulag sa katotohanan na nasilaw, Panginoon, sa mga relihiyon na hango din, Panginoon, as you have prophesied with Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, the Middle Persia, the Greeks, the Romans who have conquered us, even the influence that 
have been passed on to us. Dalangin ko, Panginoon, na ikaw po ang patuloy na kumatok sa puso ng bawat isa. And dalangin ko, Panginoon, na magsaliksik, lalo na mga mano ng palataya, na they claim to be believers of you. I pray, their Father, that they would search your word like silver and like precious stone. And as you have said in Proverbs chapter 2, and then that we will find the knowledge. And you have said it, James, hindi kapusang iyong kamay na ibigay sa amin ang knowledge. And you will give it to them, to us, liberally. And we have claimed that promise. And thank you so much for opening our eyes to the truth. Thank you, Father, for my brethren all over the world, for, for Faye in the United States, for my brethren here in the UAE, for our brethren in Saudi Arabia and in the Philippines, at sa iba't ibang dako pa ng mundo na makikinig Panginoon at mag-aaral kasama kami dalangin ko. Thank you, Father, for opening us up, opening our eyes, removing the veil in our hearts, and for this awakening. Alam namin malapit na ang pagdating mo. And dalangin ko, Panginoon, help us to strive to enter in that straight gate, that narrow way. And thank you, Father, for showing us the way. We just bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We magnify your word. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. And may you continue to convict us to dig into your word every day, every time, every minute that you give us. Help us to glorify you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. We love you, Yahuwah. We love you, Ruach HaKodesh. We love you, Yahusha HaMashiach. And in your name, Yahusha, Yah is our salvation. We pray all of these things. Amen and amen. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang tanghali. Magandang magandaling araw. And thank you so much for joining us. And kami po ay kakain na for our physical food. I hope nabusog po kayo sa ating daily bread today. We love you all. And yan po ang lahat ng aking mga kapatiran. Signing off. Galing po. Bye. Any last words? Sorry, I cut you off. Hindi ko kasi kayo masyado nakikita po mga kapatid. Pwede na po kayo magsalita. <laughs> Amen! Amen! Thank you, Mr. Ben, for joining us. Shabbat Shalom! Um, hi, Ate. Shabbat Shalom! Hi, Sister. Shabbat Shalom! Shalom! Wala. Wala. Wala pa kami. Pwede nang tumahol yung aso niyo, Mama Edna. <laughs> <laughs> Kami po ay nasa wilderness. Just uh, panning, panning. Wow! Wow! Okay. Uh, papakita ko sa inyo yung lababo namin. May tanong, may tanong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wala na si Dari. Yes po, nanay. Oh, kala ko na wala ka na. Okay. Paliguan. Sabi ko may tanong. Ayan po. May tanong, may tanong. Sige po. May tanong. May tanong. Anong tanong, Mama Edna? Tanong, Kemot. Chapter 25, 1 and 3. Verse? Verse 1 and 3. Alin po? Chapter 25. Verse 3? Ano pong? Verse 1, otos ng Panginoon. Verse 2, hanggang 3. Ito ba, hindi ba ito literal? Literal po ito. Okay, let me explain. Literal na uh, pagkakaloob ng tao. Okay, i-explain ko po. Teka po, uh, teka po. Paliwanag ko po. Teka po muna. Literal po ito. Opo. Pagkatapos, ah, sige, sige, sige. Kalma ka na. <laughs> Ang sagot, sa bagong ano to, kung paano ko i-explain sa bagong mananampalataya. Okay. Uh, Tama bang sagot na ang ano Romans 12 verse 
na sabi ni Apostol Pablo, sabi niya dyan, I blessed you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is, which is your reasonable service. Ito ba ay, ah, para kang nag-ano, although sabi nga eh, ligtas na ko no. Kasi dito nabasa ko, literal yung handog. Pagkatapos ipapaliwanag mo, kasi eh, eh, nga, ano, sapat ba na ipaliwanag yung Romans chapter 12 verse 1? Okay po. Okay na po. Sasagutin oh. ko na po. Opo. Okay. Dito po sa uh, sasagutin ko muna yung tanong ninyo. Sa, sa uh, ang tanong nyo, literal ba ito at pwede bang gamitin yung Romans chapter 12 verse 1? Kung hmm. pwede, lahat naman po pwede. <laughs> pwede pong gamitin yung Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Pero dapat mas maunawaan po natin na hindi lang yung 1 to 3 ang pinag-uusapan po dito buong chapter 25 26 at yung pakuha nga po ng salmon na nabibilad <laughs> sorry sorry po chapter 5 26 27 hanggang verse 19 is talking about the tabernacle ang pinag-uusapan po ay tabernacle So, mas magandang maintindihan pag ipinaliwanag na ang pinag-uusapan dito ay tabernacle at yung verses 1 to 3 is not specifically talking about tithes and offering. It's talking about offering na iaalay para mabuo yung tabernacle. Hindi siya yung tithes and offering na ibibigay ko yung buhay ko, uh, ibibigay ko yung kaloob ko. Hindi po yun yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, yung gamit na kailangang ibigay para mabuo yung tabernacle. So ngayon, kung i relate po ngayon natin yun sa Romans chapter 12, dahil wala na pong physical tabernacle, tayo na yung tabernacle na gusto na sabi ng Panginoon, gawin ninyo. Doon sa tabernacle na pinagawa sa mga Israelite, sabi niya, kayo ang gumawa. Kayo ang mag-offer willingly. So kung i-relate natin sa Romans chapter 12, tayo din ang gagawa ng tabernacle. Anong tabernacle ang kailangan natin gawin? Living sacrifice. Banal. Acceptable. Remember, kung tatandaan niyo po, namatay si Nadabad Abiho, bakit? Hindi acceptable yung ginawa nila. So, ano yung acceptable sa Panginoon? Ang acceptable sa Panginoon, yung according sa instructions niya. So, kung makikita natin yung pattern na... Hello, hello. Nawala. Na, 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 mahina yata yung signal nila, preacher. Hello? Hello? Hindi na sila nagagalawan. Mahina signal. Nawala. Ayun. Nawala. Nawala. Kung wala pa si preacher, dadagdagan ko lang nanay. Ano, yung sa Exodus chapter 25, yun yung mga gamit sa paggawa ng tabernacle. Yun yung hinihingi ng Panginoon. Pero sabi niya, pag nagbigay kayo, is dapat willingly, galing sa puso. So the same, sa, the same lang din sa pag, pagbabalik natin ng tights natin, dapat willingly. Pero yung sa chapter 25, yun po yung pinag-uusapan is yung paggawa ng templo, paggawa ng tabernacle. Kasi doon magdudwell ang Panginoon na makasama niya ng mga Israelites. Sa panahon natin, nawala na kasi yung tabernacle. Wala nang physical na tabernacle ngayon. Okay, nasira na po. Nasira na sa nung 70 AD, nasira na po 'yun. Alright, So, ang sinasabi ngayon ng 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 mababasa natin, napakaraming mababasa natin sa New Testament na 
Sino ngayon ang tabernacle? Tayo ang tabernacle. Yung katawan natin ngayon ang tabernacle ng Panginoon. Yun po yung sa 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18-19 na wag mong babasta-bastahin yung katawan mo kasi it is bought with a price. May bayad yan. Binayaran yan. Okay? Opo, yung tabernacle ngayon is yun yung katawan natin. Kaya nga dapat iniingatan natin. So, yung principles na tinuturo doon sa Exodus chapter 25 na dalhin mo yung mga alay na to, yung mga yung mga offerings na to, yung brass, yung yung bronze, yung bronze, yung silver at yung gold na willingly is pinapakita sa atin na ito yung mga requirements sa paggawa ng tabernacle, yung gold is dapat yung character mo is gold, precious, walang blemish, puro. Okay? Yun yung mga pinapakita po doon. Paano nila bibigay sa Panginoon? Paano nila ibibigay sa panahon ni Moses is willingly. Ganon din po tayo. Dapat dinadala natin yung sarili natin. Yung tabernacle na meron sa na meron tayo ngayon, which is our body, is dinadala natin sa Panginoon. Dapat gold. Dapat unblemished. Dapat walang spot, dapat puro. Okay? So yun po yung picture nun. So pwede siyang gamitin yung ano, yung Romans, yung yung Romans 12. Na I beseech you therefore, brethren, that I, that by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Because yah na yung sacrifice yung ayon ni, yung katawan mo. And hindi ka magsasacrifice yun ng madungis. Kasi sa panahon nila mo siya, bawal isacrifice yun yung may pilay, may yung may yung payat or may sakit. Okay, may sipon na mga na, na mga hayop bawal isakripisyo yon dapat unblemished dapat spotless so yun yung sinasabi niya sa Romans 12 na you present your bodies a living sacrifice kapag sacrifice nga, dapat unblemished kasi nga ang turo pagka ito yung sacrifice na tinatawag, tinatawag sa New Testament ayun nga yung sinasabi ni preacher MB sinasabi din natin na kailangan mong mag-soul winning kailangan mong uh, sumunod sa ano ng pastor pero sa pa, sa sa panahon na nauunawaan mo ngayon nitong salita ng Panginoong Dios kaya ko tinanong ito kung pwede bang sa bagong sa bagong ano uh, makakaalam na pwede kong ibahagi tong verse na ito sino Opo. man ang makakaalam kasi pag sinabi si mo na offering na you present your body a living sacrifice, a living offering. Pag sinabi mong sacrifice or offering, dapat unblemished yung offering. Dapat spotless. Dapat walang dumi. Dapat walang bahid dungis yung offering. And yun yung hinihingi niya. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. Yun yung servisyo mo ngayon sa Panginoon. Hindi ka na magkakatay-katay ngayon. Hindi ka na magsusunog-sunog ng mga hayop ngayon. Pero dalhin mo yung sarili mo. Pero make sure yung sarili mo is pure. Dapat unblemished. Dapat walang spot. Okay? Kasi yun ang sakripisyo mo. Paano ngayon magiging pure yung sarili mo? Yun ang magandang tanong. Paano magiging pure ngayon yung sarili natin? Paano natin ipipresent yan sa Panginoon na holy? Ano ang batayan ng holy at hindi holy? Ang nagiging problema, ang nagiging batayan ngayon ng holy at hindi holy, kung ano yung tinuturo sa atin, kung ano yung tinuturo na nakaugalian natin. Na pag gumawa ka ng ganito, nagiging holy ka, dapat ang batayan, eto lang. Ano ang sinasabi nito na holy at profane? Ano ang sinasabi nito na holy at hindi holy? Okay? Sinasabi nito, pag kumain ka ng abomination, hindi ka holy. Unclean ka. So, dito tayo. Dito tayo. Mm, yun nga, tanggalin natin yung mga naituro sa atin. Kasi sistema ng mundo eh. Sistema ng kung anumang religion na meron tayong kinakabilangan before. And hindi sistema ng Panginoon. And may standard ang Panginoon. Yun yung ina-explain ko kanina na pagpasok mo dun sa holy place na nandun yung minora, nandun yung tinapay, na sabi ng Panginoong Yahusha, ako yung tinapay, ako yung ilaw, is dinadaan ka niya sa process bago ka makapasok dun sa holy place na nandun ang Panginoong Yahuwa. Idadaan ka niya sa process. Ano yung process na yun? That is the process of sanctification. Yung ihihiwalay ka. Okay? You will be a, uh, a peculiar people. Ihihiwalay ka ng Panginoon. At yung process na yan, it is take a lifetime. Hanggat nabubuhay ka, dadaan ka sa process na yun. 
hanggat hindi bumabalik ang Panginoong Yehusha. Napakasarap lang po maunawaan na dapat palagi kasi, na natin. Na, kasi kung ipapaliwanag ko ito sa ano, may ano silang barbie. Bakit? Kung sa tingin mo ba na hindi ako, na, na, hindi ako nagsusulwining, hindi na ba ako naglilingkod sa Diyos, Apo. hindi na ba uh, sakripisyo yun para sa akin sarili? Apo. Okay Mara naman yun. Kaya nga eh, kailangan Apo. mayroon sa ano, na, eh, ano sa kanila. Actually, ganun, ganun din naman talaga ang thinking natin dati. Na pag nagsusulwining tayo, every Wednesday, ang akala natin is nagsasakripisyo tayo or nag, 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 naglilingkod tayo sa Panginoon. Alright. Okay, yun yung, okay yung steps eh. Okay yung procedure na ginagawa na nagsishare tayo ng salita ng Panginoon. Ang problema, dun sa nisinishare nating information, ano ba yung binabahagi nating information? Ano ba yung binabahagi nating salita ng Panginoon? Sumunod ka sa panalangin at pupunta ka na sa langit, ligtas ka na. Pagkatapos nun, nandun, papunta sa inuman, papunta sa sabungan. Tapos ikiklaim natin yon, oy, ligtas na. Ilan ang nasolwin mo? 200,000, 300,000. Tapos, diba, yun, sa kung saan saan. Uh, alam mo yun? So, tama yung pagsunod na mag-share ng salita ng Panginoon. Ang question ngayon, ano yung sinishare mo? Tama ba yung sinishare mo? So, doon po yung problema. Kasi kung hindi natututunan ng tao yung tamang pagsunod sa Panginoon, din sasabihin mo na ligtas na yon, kasi nanalangin, sumanod sa'yo sa panalangin, hindi natin naiintindihan yung scriptures. Kasi ang kalitasan, kakibat lagi ang pagsunod. Ang tamang pagsunod, hindi lang basta-basta pagsunod. Hindi pagsunod na sa design ng tao, sa design ng pastor, sa design ng simbahan, kundi pagsunod na design nyo ng Panginoon. Kung ano yung nakasulat sa scripture. Pag sinabing Sabado, kita-kita tayo pag Sabado. And keep it holy. <laughs> Hindi po pwedeng linggo. Kasi ang sumingin na ba yun. Okay po. Hindi nga babaguhin eh. Wala nga babaguhin eh. Hindi <laughs> lang. <laughs> Hindi naman tayo ang mananagot. Kanya-kanya tayong akong pagbumalik ang Panginoong Yahusha. Kung ano yung tinuro nung nauna, yun ang susundin. So, Ay, yun. Tandaan natin yung, yung sinabi ni Apostle Peter. Kanino kami susunod? Kayo ang mag-judge. Susunod kami sa tao o susunod kami sa Panginoon? Kayo ang magsabi. So tayo, kanino tayo susunod? Susunod ba tayo sa nakagawian? Na disenyo ng simbahan? Na disenyo ng relihiyon? O susunod tayo sa sinasabi ng scripture ngayon? So, madali lang naman i-design. Madali lang naman po kung sino ang dapat sundin. Actually, naintindihan ko naman yun. Sabi ni Preacher MB nga eh, hindi lang yung 20, sabi mo hindi lang yung 25 ay 24 to 25. Totoo naman, hindi lang naman yun yung utos niya. Hindi lang sa bagong ano, kung paano, paano nila tatanggapin ni paliwanag mo. Kasi uh, sa ngayon, kailangan yung sinasabi natin dati na personal relationship, yun ang napaka-importante hmm. ngayon. Yung kailangan ikaw mismo talaga yung magbabasa ikaw mismo ang maghahanap. Yung, nap, ayun, yung, yung Proverbs chapter 1 na napaka-importante na hanapin nyo ako na parang ginto. Hindi talaga natin talaga, hindi, hindi hinahanap eh. Hindi hinahanap. Eh. Kasi kung babasahin mo yun, lang talaga, mauunawa. Yun ang, sabi ko doon sa isang kapatiran eh. Sabi niya, sabi ko, kailang kasi natin magbasa, hindi lang. Kasi sabi ko din pa totoo ko. Sabi ko noon ito, basta lang makabasa ko. Of lang yung mabasa ko kasi sabi na tapos mo yung buong chapter so may reward ka na. Ayan. Pero sa akin, eh, dapat sa panahon natin ngayon na iintindihin natin kung ano yung ating binabasa. Eh may sumagot sa akin, bakit sa tingin mo ba yung binabasa ko hindi ko naintindihan? Ayan. Ayan yung <laughs> parang... Eh, sa, ang sagot ko na lang, yung sa sinabi niya, bakit din sa binabasa, binabasa ko hindi ko ba naintindihan? Sabi ko, eh, di, basahin pa po natin ng mas malalim pa para lalo natin maintindihan. So, yun naman yung part natin. As kingdom of priests, as peculiar people na inihiwalay ng Panginoon, yun naman yung part natin na ipakita sa kanila at ituro sa kanila kung ano yung tinuturo sa atin ng Panginoon. Kasi yun, yun nga, kahit yung mga apostol, ha, hindi nila naiintindihan eh. Pag nagtuturo ang Panginoon ng Yahusha ng parabol, yun yung bato, di ba? Dumalo ako. Dumalo ako ng, ano, Sunday. Last, last Sunday. Sabi niya, 
eh, kasi yun ang sinabi ko, eh, mas lalong, basahin pa po natin na, ano, mas, para mas lalo nating maintindihan. Sabi niya, eh, ikaw nga, hindi nga namin nakakasama linggo-linggo. Eh, kami, nan, bawat linggo, nandito kami. Sabi ko, eh, wala naman mo yun sa attendance ang aking pagdala, ano sa Panginoon. Eh. Sabi ko, ganun, wala naman po sa attendance yung pag-atuklas natin ng salita ng Panginoon Diyos. Eh. Ayan. Doon na natin. And then, yeah, pasok yung, yung pride ng tao na huli kami pag nasa simbahan kami pag linggo. <laughs> uh, ayan. Doon pumapasok yung pride ng tao. Yun yung, yung sarili na gustong alisin sa atin ng Panginoon. Hindi sarili. Hindi sarili. Yun yung pinapakita. Mahirap, mahirap sila ano ha ng pangunawa. I-explain mo kung ano ngayon yung natutuhan. Kasi pag sinabi mong nagbabasa ka, ayun na. Para kung inano nila na binabalot nila, eh kami, bawat linggo nandito kami. Ikaw nga, wala eh. Yeah. Sabi ko nga, eh yun nga, hindi lang naman sa attendance dapat yung ano nga natin eh, kundi yung sa pagbabasa naman. Yan ang Ay, sinasabi ng Panginoong, Panginoong Yahusha na tanggalin niya yung sarili. Kasi ang pagmamahal, hindi about self. Hindi about tungkol sa sarili. Hindi yung kami-kami-kami. Hindi yung ako-ako-ako. And ganyan na ganyan yung Pharisee attitude eh. Kami, nasa simbahan kami. Kami yung mga matutuhid. Kami yung nakakalit na, ng patas. Ayan, ah, ganyan. Hindi ako nakipagtalo. So, tayo, ang trabaho lang natin bilang mga, yun nga, bilang, bilang mga nakakaunawa ngayon is explain lang natin. And not in our might. Yung lagi sinasabi ni Preacher eh. Hindi sa sarili nating lakas. Hindi sa sarili. Hindi sa sarili. Oo, kami anggap na kami ng reward na natapos namin yung ano, ewan ko kung anong reward nila yun sa reading Bible. Sabi ko, ako hindi, hindi ako nataan, hindi ako nakatapos. Tsaka sabi ko, kailangan kong basahin yung Bible na maunawaan ko. Hindi lang sa paligsahan. It takes a humble heart talaga na maunawaan ito. Kahit kay preacher na yun nga, ta- lahat tayo, kahit ako, ito rin yung mga tinuro ko dati before, yung mga ganyan, yung mga ganyan sistema dito sa mga kapatid ko rito, mga kasama ko sa trabaho, na kailangan mong ihambol yung sarili mo, kailangan mong magpakumbaba na mali po yung naituro ko, mali yung naitanim natin sa dati or natutunan natin dati na ito yung pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon. And kailangan ng mapagkumbabang puso, hindi yung yabang, <laughs> hindi yung pride. Kasi hindi ka makakalapit sa Panginoon ng gano'n. Yun naman ang tinuturo niya. Nasabi niya, kailangan yung puso niyo katulad lang ng mga batang to eh. Ganun lang kababa. Huwag niyong, huwag, niyong, huwag niyong pipigilan yung mga bata na lumapit. Kasi sabi niya, kailangan yung puso niyo katulad ng mga bata na to, na handan tumanggap. Pero pag meron pa rin tayo ng pride, yung yabang na kami, kami yung matuwid, tatapos na namin yung Bible, eh, may reward na kami, eh, sabihin mo lang po, yung reward ko nasa langit. <laughs> Alala ko kay Nunoy nung pumunta siya dito. Kahapon ba yun? Mama, kahapon. Sabi ko, sumama ka sa ano, pag-aaral ng Bible. Sabi ko, pumunta dito ng Friday. Pwede naman kayong pumunta doon kung gusto nyo sa linggunan ng umaga. Apa. Sabi niya, ay may kawain ng sabado. Sabi ko, eh, yun na nga eh. Ang gawain ng sabado, yung bagong tipan ng ating pinapahalagahan, yung lumang tipan, hindi na natin inaalaala. Hindi na na ako sinang sabi ko, dapat yung lumang tipan alalahanin natin bago tayo pumunta sa bagong tipan. No comment. At ako, honestly, hindi ko rin alam kung paano sila ikukonvince. <laughs> hindi talagang pumapasok yung hindi sa sarili nating kakayahan. Kung paano, na. kung paano, kung paano nila mauunawaan yung nauunawaan natin, hindi sa sarili nating kakayahan. Ang trabaho lang natin is Ikayatin sila, arali natin ito, basahin natin ito. Pag mayroon pag mayroon pag mayroong pagkakataon na makapag-share kung ano talaga yung salita ng Panginoon, ipakita natin verse for verse, chapter for chapter, precepts upon precepts. Na, na ito yung sinasabi ng Panginoon. And kung talagang para sa Panginoon sila, I do believe na dadalhin sila sa tama. Dadalhin sila sa tama. 
kasi nandito tayo ngayon eh. Tayo yung mga naghahanap. This is hindi iyon para magyabang, pero alam mo po 'yon na pag hinahanap mo talaga yung pakita ng Panginoon, hindi imposible na ipakita niya sa iyo kung ano yung tama. Hindi kapos ang biyaya ng Panginoon para ituro sa iyo kung ano talaga yung tama. And yun nga, si Ari na nagsabi na kokonti lang ang mga kapasok. So, kokonti lang tayo. Sa panahon ni Noah, ah, walo nga lang eh. Pag-iya <laughs> lang niya. 100 plus years na nagturo ng salita ng Panginoon pero walang naligtas. Pero, sige lang. Sige lang. Patuloy natin yung panalangan yung mga kapatid natin, yung mga kasama natin dati na maniwanagan din sila. Bahala ang banal na spiritual magpaunawa. Yun. Hingi ko rin ng prayer pala si Rappi. Pinababalik niya siya sa trabaho sa lunis. Amen. 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 Pero doon sa ano, hindi, hindi sa tagig. Doon sa lugar ng saan ba yun, yung ginadala yung mga baliw sa labas, hindi sa loob. Mandaluyong. <laughs> doon siya, pinasa. Yeah. Brother Ivan. Brother Danny, kung may dusto po kayong idagdag. Sir M.A., kung nakikinig ko po, baka may dusto po kayong idagdag. Ganda lang, ang ganda ng discussion. <laughs> hey! Hello! At may maisasagot tayo sa mga... Nakikinig po ako. Nakikinig lang. <laughs> Kahit mga, mga dati ng kasama. Apa. Mira pala yeah. mag-nectay sa wilderness. Ang init. Masakal <laughs> 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 long sleep pa, Brad. 